Hello, everyone, again. This is Mr. Gonzalez uh, with the Living Environment Regents Exam Review. This is episode four, The Cell. So let's take a look at some cell material that's going to be on the Regents. All right, first off, you need to know smallest to biggest. What this is is, well, the cell is the tiniest unit of life. And if you put a bunch of cells together, you get what's called tissue. And a bunch of tissue gives you organs. A bunch of organs that work together are called an organ system. And if you put a bunch of organ systems together, you get what's called an organism or an individual. Now, types of questions you get, they vary, but this was one where they gave you some circles and you had to organize, figure out which way it was organized. It turns out it's number two at the bottom there. Cells to tissue to organ to organ systems. Sometimes they throw organelle in there, so be careful. An organelle is tinier than a cell, so that would be answer one. And another way to ask it, they put a bunch of cells together on a picture, and it says these groups of cells represent different, and they are tissue, because tissue is a bunch of cells together. Okay? Now the cell membrane, very popular, the cell membrane. Uh, just know the cell membrane is what's called selectively permeable. That just basically is a fancy way of saying that it can choose what goes in and out of it. Now if you notice those blue little balls there, if stuff is small enough, like glucose, it can go right through the membrane. Some stuff that's kind of bigger needs the big proteins that are embedded in the cell membrane there. Um, so stuff can enter through the proteins. <laughs> now, you might have done this lab with the red onion. Um, this shows osmosis. What osmosis is, is if stuff is too big to move in and out of a cell, sometimes water moves in and out of a cell. And so if you added salt to onion cells, you shrink them. Now just know that it's if it happens in a plant cell, the cell wall does not shrink. Plant cells have a cell membrane that shrinks, so the purple that you see there, uh, the concentrated purple, is the cell membrane shrinking. Diffusion, very popular on the regions. Now diffusion is very cool. Here's how it works. You have what's called two different concentrations. High concentration, that means there's a bunch of stuff in there, to low concentration, which means there's less stuff. In diffusion, stuff will always move from high to low. So in this case, cell, in this cell, the stuff will move out, okay? Now how many? Well, two, because you have to reach what's called equilibrium. So both sides will have five and five. And there you go. Now active transport is the opposite of diffusion. Active transport is where there's low in one side of the cell and high on the other side. You want to go low to high for active transport, so that means one from inside will move out. Now the problem with this is you need energy for it to happen, ATP. It doesn't happen automatically, so a lot of times you have to write something like requires energy to happen if they ask you how active transport is different. All right, let's go through the famous organelles on the regions. These are the top organelles that are um, tested on the regions. Mitochondria, chloroplasts, nucleus, ribosomes, vacuoles. So let's start with the mitochondria. There's a picture of a real mitochondria on a regions, and basically the job of a mitochondria is to give energy to the cell. It produces ATP, you'll also see that, by a process called cellular respiration, which is where you use oxygen and glucose to make energy, ATP. So you'll see some stuff like uses glucose, oxygen, and one of the things it releases, like these arrows that show, is CO2. Okay, the chloroplast. The chloroplast is found in plant cells, and it's the location of photosynthesis. Now, basically, what that means is chloroplasts make food. They make glucose for the plant. Um, another thing you may be asked is where they're located, and they're in leaf cells, because that's the part of the plant that absorbs sunlight. The nucleus. The nucleus controls all cell functions, but that's not usually tested. What they usually ask you is what's in there. And 
pretty much the nucleus job is to hold DNA, genetic information. And you see it written a bunch of ways on the regents, either as where DNA is located, location of the chromosomes, gene genes or genetic information, or hereditary information. Ribosomes. Ribosomes, or ribosomes, are little dots, as you see on the cell there, labeled number three. And they're pretty much the location of protein synthesis, okay? Sometimes the regents won't mention proteins with ribosomes. They'll mention amino acids, which are the building blocks of proteins. So be careful. And ribosomes use RNA. Vacuoles. Vacuoles are the location for storage of a cell. And know that in plants, they're much larger. They hold water. Okay, enough of organelles. Now, how do cells talk to each other? Well, in cellular communication, there's two main examples, nerve cells and hormones and target cells. Now, in nerve cells, neurons can actually talk to each other through this little space called the synapse. And in the endocrine system, hormones can talk to specific cells on these by sending these little obviously round or triangular shapes to catch on to these things called receptors. And so both, what the regions wants you to know, are shape-specific. They use shape-specific chemicals to talk to each other. And lastly, how do cells divide? Well, cells divide two main ways, mitosis and meiosis. A lot of people confuse these two, but really simply, mitosis is when you make two identical cells. It's usually used for growth, or like if you cut your skin, you grow more skin with mitosis. It's also used in asexual reproduction, like bacteria do it. The main thing is that mitosis makes clones, two identical cells with the same chromosome number. Now, meiosis is involved in sexual reproduction. That happens in people's gonads, sexual organs, sp um, sperm and egg, um, testes, ovaries. Meiosis produces four daughter cells, which are have half the chromosome number of a typical uh, organism. So we humans have 46 chromosomes. Meiosis makes uh, cells with 23 chromosomes in each. How come? So two um, 23s and 23s can hook up and make another 46, another baby. Okay? So pretty much it. That is our cell review um, really super quick. But um, see you soon. Bye.